Recording in progress. What up? What's good, family? I'm your boy Trey Frazier. I got my brother Maestro Styles here with me. Yes, sir. Welcome to another episode of the Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. I uh, want to give a special shout out to all of our Facebook Live viewers right now. Make sure y'all tune in on Facebook Live. Click the like button on the Facebook page. You can also follow us on YouTube and also on Instagram at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. Also on Twitter at Barbershop S-P-O-R-2. Uh, happy Black History Month, man. <laughs> What a what a way to start off Black History Month, huh? Yeah, yeah, yes sir, yes sir. I got the I got the Black Father T shirt with the with the fist hat going right now. Uh I'd love to talk about these games over the weekend. I'd love to get into Tom Brady's retirement, but uh that's that's not what's hitting right now. Uh we, we got some big news. Brian Flores uh, is suing the NFL for their hiring processes and discrimination and racism. Um, I don't know if you want to take the lead on this one, Maestro. I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't. <laughs> this, I think you are very excited in, 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 our, in the short time we talked before we got on the show. Um, I will let I let go ahead and do your thing. So I so before the show, so I, I texted you a few hours ago. And I actually took that document. It's it's basically the legal document detailing yeah. everything that Brian Flores is accusing the NFL of. And I got it off of Twitter. Somebody posted it. I decided to copy paste it to you. I actually skimmed through some of it. I didn't read everything verbatim. Got home. Got tied up with the kids. We went out to Target. Came back and all that. So, um, but I I kind of get the sense of what's happening. And even after the show, I'll read more carefully about what's in it. But I think there's three things that need to be pointed out here. So let's start with let's start with the team that fired him a few weeks ago, the, the Miami Dolphins. So it's detailed in the in the legal document that the owner Stephen Ross paid was offering to pay Brian Flores $100,000 for every game that Brian Flores was to lose on purpose throughout the 2019 season I believe which was yep. his rookie season as a coach and yep. the moment I saw that I got to thinking and you and I we had this conversation a couple of years ago during that season it was a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Miami Dolphins. It was a Monday night game, if I if I remember correctly. And yep. all <clears throat> throughout that season, up to that game, I kept saying, yo, the Dolphins are throwing games. Like, they're tanking on purpose. And you kind of was, it was more like you was kind of with me, and then you was more like, eh, I just think they're just not a very good team. Which they weren't. They, they weren't a very good team that particular year. But I remember that game, and, and, and I don't remember the actual play. It might have been a special teams play, but it was something where, for me, just kind of did it for me. Like, yo, these niggas are really, like, tanking the season. They're really losing games on purpose. And, and, and if there's any truth to this whole $100,000 that the owner is offering to pay his coach for losing games on you know within his own franchise then Steven Ross has to forfeit this franchise he has to forfeit his ownership um, as the owner of the Miami Dolphins now I read something recently on Twitter that allegedly it's just allegedly that during that season he partook in some gambling website around that same time that he was offering the coach to, you know, throw games, offering money to throw games. Mm -hmm. And, again, if there's any truth to that, and that's connected to him telling Brian Flores, hey, I'm going to pay you some money, he, he's got to forfeit that team. He, he's got to forfeit the ownership of that football team, bro. I mean, that that's about as messy as it gets. I mean, 
we, we talk about Washington football team Messi, and I know we'll we'll talk about them later in the show. But this is like this this is messy. Like this is this is like Pete Rose level type of gambling, you know, against your team. You, you know what I'm saying? Like you 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 gotta you gotta get that man up out of there if, if there's any truth um, to that. So that, I, so I know you wanna I, respond to that. I know you wanna respond to that. About to so say, can I can I can we yeah. Uh, so just for just for conversations purposes, for mm-hmm. for perspectives purposes, the um, the Denver Denver the Miami Dolphins went four and twelve that year. Yeah. Um. Um. But they started like zero and nine. Yeah, zero and zero oh, oh and seven, I believe it was. Oh, um, and seven. I mean, I'm. I'm Hold on, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Week one, loss. Week two, loss. Week three, loss. Week four, loss. Week five, loss. Week six, loss. Week seven, loss. Week eight is their first win. So one and seven. Okay. So they, um, so they lost seven straight. So they lost seven straight. The last loss was to Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. um, the game that you were talking to yep. talking about. Yep. And then, then, then they beat the uh, Jets. Mm-hmm. And then they beat the Colts in two straight weeks. Then they lost to the Bills, Dolphins, and you know they're going to lose some more. And then they won their last two games of the season yep. against the Bengals and the Patriots. Right. So they went four and twelve. Um, just let that is a total of one point two million dollars. If uh, that that uh, Ross offered to pay Brian Flores. Yeah. Um. I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, it's uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't know. How, I'm, I'm not saying uh, accusing or anything. Um, I'm just saying that they lost 12 games and $1.2 million st- stood to be gained in that situation. Mm-hmm. I'm, that That's all I'm saying. You take with it what you will. I'm not implying. I'm, I'm just stating what. You're the doing the math. Are. You're if, doing the math. <laughs> if, in fa- if emphatically that is true. Brian Flores stood to gain one point two million dollars off the books. Now, I think the question, I think the answer we're looking for is, did he actually accept this money? Like that's not documented in the legal. I'm not, and, and nor uh, should I'm be. Not, and nor should be. I'm not. But I'm not. I'm not accusing. I'm just putting sure, it on the table that sure. that's that's what's going on. That's the that payout. Situation. That's and the payout. Yeah. That's what's. Go- I'm not saying he. All- I'm not saying he took it. I'm not yep. even saying Ross offered it. Yep. I'm just saying that that's that's what that's the money you're talking about right there. Yeah. Um. Right. And and um. You know, 1.2 million dollars is a lot of fucking money. That that that's what that's that's what I'll say to that. Um. I guess to kind of uh further the conversation and and, and and you know I guess give my response to what Brian Flores is doing mm-hmm. um and I and I guess before I even do that we got to talk about the other two made I guess major points in the uh in the in this lawsuit yeah <clears throat> excuse me um go ahead go ahead I'm sorry go ahead no that's cool so the the second point so the text messages between him and Belichick in regards mm-hmm. to the Giants coaching opening, which was filled by Brian Dable a few days ago. So yep. these text messages basically indicate that Bill Belichick was congratulating Brian Flores on possibly getting the Giants head coaching job. But it turns out that this happened as Brian Dable had already been considered for the position. No, no, no. So, I think you. I think you're saying that wrong. Am, am I saying it wrong? Okay. Yeah. I, what ahead. happened? What happened was is that uh, Bill Belichick was meaning to text Brian Dable and accidentally texted Brian Flores. Okay. So he was congratulating Brian Dable on getting the job, mm-hmm. um, and but he was actually texting Brian, Brian Flores. Flores. Brian Flores played along a little bit, like, you know, do you think I'll get it? Whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. Bill Belichick still was thinking he was texting Brian Dayball, went on to say, nah, you got it. Mm-hmm. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I, I heard you got it. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. And uh, then he told, then Brian Flores was like, oh, nah, you, you sure you, you talking to, you know, he told him, are you talking to Brian Flores? You're not talking to Dayball. Yeah. And I don't interview until Thursday. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Bill, Bill Belichick then said, oh, shit. He didn't say shit, but he said, oh, shit, my fault. Said he messed uh, up. Yeah. I messed up, yep. And essentially, uh, they had already hired Brian Dable. They hadn't announced it, but had already decided they to made hire Brian up. Dable. Mm-hmm. Right, before, before they interviewed Brian Flores. Now, obviously, um, the, the, the issue with that is, I would assume, is that, you know, you, the Rooney Rule, you're supposed to interview whatever you however you post interview black uh or minority coaches or candidates let me say yeah um you're supposed to do that and uh for it to already for the decision in your mind to already be made means that he he brian flores was going on what they call what they're calling a a, a scam scam and what's the, uh i forget the term they're using it but basically he went on a bullshit interview um yeah it's, it's, it's just interview. for the experience, basically. It's, it's, it's like they're just covering their no, bases. It, if they're covering their bases. They're covering their bases. It's, yeah. not, it's not practice for shit. They, they're, it's no, no, no. I didn't say practice. Nothing. I said it's, it took, said in their eyes experience. But really, it's not, it's, experience not, for them it's, it's really not an experience for a head coach. It's, yeah, it's, it's, an, obli- just, it's, it's an obligation, really. Obligation. It's, yeah. it's an obligation. Um, look, man. Um I'm I'm not at all surprised. Um, I, I respect Brian Flores's. Uh, you know, I gotta I gotta do I gotta try to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, he he acknowledges that he is essentially Colin Kaepernick in his career. He he acknowledges yep. that that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you acknowledge that, then I hope you get the results that you're looking for. Um, but I mean, this is the boys' club, man. I mean, look, man, I would love to hit, sit here and say to you, Trey, that I am outraged or, or you know, I'm upset and all these things. But I mean, why are we why are we acting like this ain't enough? This is nothing short of. I mean, it goes back, and I hate that we got to keep like. I really feel like we're gonna be talking about this for years down the road, like we did Colin Kaepernick. Like, yeah, we know what this is. And, and and the fact of the matter is, I'm calling us as black people, us as supporters of our community to the table because here's the truth. We still going to support this club. We're still going to watch the games. Mm-hmm. We're still going to do everything, even though they know that they don't give a fuck about uh, having us be represented in higher positions. They don't care, but we're still going to support the product. So it's, I mean, it's like I would love to sit here and pretend, but it's a game. It's a fucking game mm-hmm. that 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 entertains us, and we don't care about the. We don't really care about uh, the ins and outs. We see uh, we see us on the field, and, and and at the end of the day, they entertain us on the field, and that's all we're really truly concerned about. So, what's the? I guess. Well, before I get to what the end game could possibly be with this, right? I, I did want to mention the other um, portion of this, too, because he yeah. also called out the Denver Broncos. Like, and, I mean, he called out three franchises and then said the rest of the 29 franchises in the league. He called out the Denver Broncos in yeah. his document. Um, he interviewed for the Broncos coaching position and there was something there, and I, and I don't remember exactly what, but... I tell you, 2019... The, 2019? In the 2019 season, uh, ironically, the same year he got hired in Miami, he right. also interviewed for the uh, Denver job that Vic Fangio eventually got. And um, basically, uh, they, they said that John Elway, he said specifically John Elway and some other guys showed up an hour late, Drunk. clearly... Yep hung over mm-hmm. clearly hung over to the point where he could tell that they were clearly hung over they didn't take yep. that process serious he essentially went on another bullshit interview because they had already uh decided who they wanted to hire to his account they just had him come in and do the interview because the Rooney rule states that you have to do the interview mm-hmm. so um he called the Broncos out the Giants out in the in the other example we talked about, and then the Dolphins yeah. in the uh, you know in in the third example or the first example we talked about. So I mean, look, man. Um, here's the thing, man. And, and much like Colin Kaepernick, Brian Flores is is put in a situation is put in a, a a situation in the eye of the in the eye of the consumer, the media. Um, either he can be he can go all go all out. 
and 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 lose because like it or not my my guess is, is he's gonna lose unless he got some or, receipts unless he got some or, receipts no no bro i mean, i hear you but no no because who's to say like let's say let's let's say that um Let's say that uh, you know th- th- this goes to court, whoop whoop whoop, mm-hmm. and they say, well, how do you justify? How do you know they're saying to, let's say, the Broncos organization, right? How do you just? Uh, what's your response to him saying that you guys didn't really take my interview serious? All they could just say is, I took it very seriously. The Giants already put out a statement. You know, we took that serious. Of course. Uh, Brian Flores mm-hmm. was was in was in the talks all the way to the eleventh hour, whatever the fuck that is. And 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 you know, he just didn't get the job because he was because he wasn't the best qualified coach for the job. Mm-hmm. Once they come through with that, there's nothing that can discount that he that he was or wasn't because at the end of the day, qualifications is in the eye of the person doing the hiring. Sure. So it, it, so sure. so he either so he either goes through this whole process to lose, but maybe get more information out to what's going on, mm-hmm. or he takes this settlement and shuts the fuck up like Colin Kaepernick did. And yeah. And that and, and 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 based on the decision he makes, we're going to take that a say. We're going to take that a certain way, you know what I'm saying? So it, for me, I would love to sit here and, and act like this is like surprise. It's not surprising. It's not and, surprising. And, doesn't and mean I can't business. be outraged. It doesn't mean that I can't be a little outraged yeah, sure. about it. I'm not saying I'm not saying that to to uh, dissuade your feelings. Mm-hmm. I'm saying for my personal opinion, I can't. I can't. I, I'm not outraged. I'm not. I'm. I'm. What's the answer? What's mm-hmm. the fucking answer? Like, what's the answer? You doing this is going to do what? I'm interested to see what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I got a pretty good guess of what's going to happen. Of course, it's either going to be one of the two things I outlined. So it's for me. It's just like I right, well, um, I. I mean, if you if you get if you get a hundred million dollars like allegedly Colin Kaepernick get, did, great for you. Great for you, but what does that do for the coaches behind you that need jobs? Eric B. Enemy, we could that we're gonna have to talk about uh later on in the episode. Yeah, and uh, by the way, I think he is listed in that 58 page legal document as well. I mean, he's he's pointing to examples of the number of black, um, yeah, defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators, offensive coordinators. Mm-hmm. the fact that there's one black coach in Mike Tomlin who's the head coach in the league. Um, he's just basically putting the numbers out there as, I guess, his proof. I don't think it's enough, but I, I, I can't fault the man for trying to put information out there to at help all. his case. Not at all. I, can, I can't fault Not him for all. that. And I don't blame you. All. I don't blame you for the... And, and, and maybe pessimistic view is the wrong term, but I don't blame you for feeling the way you feel about it because you're right. At the end of the day, this is no surprise to anybody. This is almost Kaepernick 2.0 if it's not. Um, my thing is 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 that now um, we got a, we got a lot of like <laughs> we, we got a lot of like messy organizations going on and even the ones that haven't been exposed yet right so you know there's there is hope and you know people are talking about it um i know he's gonna be on cbs in the morning tomorrow brian flores that is to talk further about it i don't know what that does um being that cbs is a partner of the nfl i mean one of their biggest partners of the nfl um, interested to see how that turns out, um, but I, I I can't I can't yeah I'd be I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't outraged a little bit because I am sure. outraged sure but at the sure. same time I know how these things go um, I tweeted earlier that this thing to me it can't just be settled this can't be no shut the f up money it it, it can't be that. I need to see these guys, these NFL owners, these representatives. I need to see these guys in a courtroom. I need to see them face the jury, face the judge. This thing has got to go all the way to the line, to the end of the line. 
and and I guess that's where we have to talk about the end game to this. So, at the end of the day, okay, go ahead. What I was go just going to ask, I was going to end with a question there. So, at the end of the day, okay, how does this thing end in in your mind? In my mind. <laughs> Like I said, it either ends one of two ways. And in my so the first the first the first option is he you know he goes to let's say he goes to court. I don't want your hush money. I yep. want to expose you for the for the immoral fraud, uh, unethical, racist people that you are. Meaning every single owner yep. in the NFL, everybody included. If you're not in, in your heart racist then you are at least a part of a system that is racist. So mm-hmm. you are a part of the problem. So I want to, so it, it goes that way. But here's the thing. How much money and resources Brian Flores has to run this long, this long game against 32 NFL teams and the NFL as a whole, you know, as a whole, how much, right. how long is your money to run that course it's to prove question. something substantial? Mm-hmm. It's not that long. Let me, let me, I can answer it for you. It's not that fucking long. You're talking about billion dollar organizations that got lawyers up the what? $32 billion. I mean, all of them might not be billion dollar organizations, but they're pretty mm-hmm. damn close. Right. That you got to go against their legal teams, then the NFL's representation, and you, mm-hmm. bear, and you, and, and there is a, a small inkling that you might have took $1.2 million of hush money. Your money ain't long enough to fight that fight. Right. You're going to lose. Right. The other option, the other option is, all right, hey, man, uh, I don't want you, I don't want to go, I don't want nothing to come out, This me as the NFL, I don't want to go through none of this bullshit, I don't want to be in court, I don't want the press, I don't want none of that behind racism, especially after we're coming after, we got all these insignias on the back of our helmets and in the back of fields and all this bullshit going on, we don't want that racist shit on our docket after we trying to clean it up and make it look good, we hired Jay-Z, hmm. all, these, all these gestures we made, to try to clean up and make y'all happy. I don't want mm-hmm. this in my motherfucker. So let's settle. I will pay you. You know, let's say they allegedly they gave Colin Kaepernick 100 mil. Let's double it. We'll give you $200 million to just shut the fuck up and let this go away. You good for the rest of your fucking life. Now shut up and let us run this, this boys club the way we've been running it. Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to happen one of those two ways. And yeah. here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Is 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 as immoral as that might be to all us broke motherfuckers for him to take that two hundred million dollars of hush money, mm-hmm. two hundred million dollars of money in a black family changes wealth. a lot. Generational wealth, brother. And who the fuck is going to be mad at a black man changing his generation, changing generations of wealth in his family, and he could possibly put some of that money back into the community? Yeah, I, I know some people that would call him a coon, <laughs> but I don't want to. I don't want to wanna get into that. But um, but yeah, I, I I think you're right. I think it ends in those two instances that you talked about. Um, I think for me, and again, I'll, I'll go back to what I tweeted earlier. Um, I want this. I want this thing to go to distance. I don't want a settlement. I, I want. I want this thing to go to distance. You know, what if? What if somebody else stands next to Brian Flores? What if somebody Who like the... A, f- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Who what the... F- and, and I know you're going to tell me. Who the fuck would stand behind that in the NFL to risk their jobs just like he just about to lose his? I wasn't expecting this from Brian Flores, so I'm, I'm just throwing a what but if Brian, out there. But I'm, Brian... I'm, okay, I'm, I'm, go, I'm, ahead. I'm go th- ahead. I'm throwing a what if out there because this, this is a surprise. Like, I, I mean, of all the things... That happened this weekend and today. This was kind of the last thing that I expected to happen, particularly from Brian Flores, a guy who was, I thought, trying to get back into the NFL. You know, being a head coach someplace else. I mean, he did. Said he was a finalist the, in Houston. Right, he was a finalist in Houston. I think he interviewed for the Giants. I think he interviewed someplace else. So, yeah, this is, like, this is out of left field. Like, I wasn't expecting this. So, I think it's a good question. Who, um, if anybody, what if he, what if somebody says, hey, I stand with Brian Flores. What if one of these coaches, players, uh, execs, GMs, 
What if some of them people come out and say, hey, I stand with Brian Flores? Hell, um, and, I, and I tweeted this earlier. I, it, I would be, I'd be, disapp I'd be disappointed if Snoop, M, MJB, and Kendrick, and, and Dr. Dre um, wouldn't perform this halftime show. But if they came out on stage and said, yo, we're not going to perform. We're going to bring attention to what's been going on. They might just walk off the set. It, I, I wouldn't be mad at them one bit. I wouldn't be mad at them one bit. Because at the end of the day, this might be the last time they ever see that stage. So I think for them, if they ever decide, if this becomes a reality or possibility, hey, they might just come out and be like, look, we don't want to perform. Like, you know, y'all NFL, y'all doing niggas dirty. Y'all doing y'all own people in the, dirty, in the league dirty. You know, I wouldn't be upset they at that. Doing, well, let's be clear about that. They're not doing their own people dirty. They're doing niggas dirty. Let's be clear about that. Mm -hmm. um, they're not, yeah, these white people are doing niggas dirty. They're not doing their own people. If it was their own people, that's why That's why we black people can't get jobs they qualify for yeah. because white people are looking out for their people. Yeah, I, that's what I meant, yeah, but I kind of yeah. misspoke. But, but yeah, 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 you're right. But, but, um, and, 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 Look, man, you, you said a lot. I'm trying to process it all and, 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 and rebut to it all because mm -hmm. um, while, with while you're on the positive side, and, and, and brother, I, norm, I normally am on that positive, can do, you know, but listen, mm -hmm. man, li listen here. That would be huge. When, when Colin Kaepernick protested, mm -hmm. you know who stood beside him? Eric Reed. The biggest person who stood. The that's the biggest fucking person who mm -hmm. stood beside him was yep. Eric fucking Reed. Yep. Not a Aaron, not a not not for real anyway. Not a Aaron Rodgers. Not a Bill Belichick. Not a Tom Brady. Not a not a a, a fucking. I got you. Uh, I got you. Morris Smith. Not a fucking Roger Goodell. I got not you. A, not a not not near a fucking so. Not a fucking whoever the owner of the 49ers is. Not a Art Rooney who who quote unquote put this in here to incentivize black coaches and incentivize teams to hire black coaches and have black representation. That, that, that none of this none of the none of those people stood up for Colin Kaepernick who was at that time one of the best quarterbacks in the league at that time. Yep. Ain't no way in hell they standing up for Brian Flores. Nobody of the caliber to make a difference. I, Let me say that. Nobody of the I caliber. I don't have. A, to I don't have an argument against that. I don't have an argument right. against that. I, it it wouldn't surprise me if nobody stood next to him. But I'm uh, just. I'm just no, playing no, no, what if game. But, sure, sure. And I'm not. Again, I, I'm just rebutting. I'm not. And I don't think nobody's going to stand up. I just think that them nobody of caliber is going to stand up. Nobody of that type of caliber. No, no, no. Art Rooney, my coach. No, Mike Tomlin is going to do it. No, no, my, no, no. Eric Bieniemy who need a job. No, David Cully who's probably looking for a job. Not near a black or white person for that matter is going to stand up for Brian Flores and say he deserves a job and he deserves to not be blackballed like that. And because let's be clear, it's going down. He's about to start being blackballed. Oh, yeah. All of a sudden, after he came off the after he came off the Dolphins that this season, even though they didn't make the playoffs, after he yep. came off of the what's never been done in NFL history in this season, in this past season, mm -hmm. they're going to tell him that he is not as qualified as the likes of whoever, Brian Dable, with due respect, hasn't been a head coach nowhere. Uh, uh, fucking uh, Josh McDaniels, who got the Oakland job, he's not as qualified as those people. And that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. whoever, and whoever the fuck got hired in, uh, in uh, uh, Denver, the, the guy from Green Bay. Oh. Ha ha Hackershack or whatever the fuck his name is. Mm -hmm. The white dude, Nate, Nate, whatever his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Brian Flores is just as qualified as uh, the cat in Denver and the cat in... Um, yeah, in, in New York, um, yeah. In New York, just as qualified, yeah. if not more. If not more qualified, just based on resume. No, he's the experienced coach. Coached. Yeah, right, he's right. the experienced coach. Now, I'm not going to hate on those guys because... They were coordinators, and they got their Fuck first em. opportunity. So Fuck I'm not – well, you you, you you can feel that way, and that's cool. That's cool. But my only outrage is 
is that it's just white coaches being hired. It's like it's the same cycle. We got two new black general managers, one in Minnesota and one in uh, Chicago. And um, don't Chicago got their coach too? Don't Chicago got um, what's the, what's the dude name? Um, oh my God, Matt somebody, the dude from the the dude that oh, ran the defense Matt, in the yeah, Colts. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yes, and yes, I'm yes. like, wait, I'm and I'm yes. like, wait a minute, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. They, his team couldn't stop the Jaguars from scoring when they needed to get in the playoffs, and this dude gets a job off of that. <laughs> off of but, the, but here's like, the thing, but, but here's the thing, Trey. You saying you you getting mad? You, you just said that, but the black nigga hired him. The black nigga hired him. So what 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 that tell you? Does does that mean that he has control? Like they want to perceive it as, or it sound like it's the owners to me? It's either it's it's either it's look, and I'm not gonna sit here and say the dude is or ain't qualified because at the end of the day. Regardless of how I feel about his qualifications, mm -hmm. it's still up to who the hiring manager to feel like, oh, because it's not just qual. I mean, yeah. qualifications are a lot of things. It's, is you know, what your plans are. Mm -hmm. Do me and you vibe? You know, it's it's it's, it's bigger than just X's and O's. Sure. That, that's just a fact. Sure. If I if you have a bad interview and you're more qualified, you might not get the job. Because you had a shit ass interview. Those things are real things that happen. These are right. still just jobs. Right. So I'm not gonna sit here and and and, and, and I'm what what's emphatically true is that there is a low percentage of coaches, GMs and coordinators, and a high percentage of people out there looking for it. Mm -hmm. In the in the in the minority community. So I, you know, and I know it, it this, it, the, the fucking white coach carousel, the fucking white GM carousel, and the fucking white coordinator carousel just goes around and around, and we get stuck at the low level coordinator jobs. Um, yeah, when it's a position coaches, wide receiver coach, when it's a, when running it's a, back coach. When it's a fucking, when it's a fucking 70%. Black people to everybody else margin in the league. So who the fuck you think gonna relate to these black people more? Man, nothing, nothing warms my heart more than when the Pittsburgh Steelers got into the fucking playoffs and Mike, they, they was on the uh, fucking TikTok or Instagram, or whatever, and you see mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin getting in there partying with his players, yeah. like yeah. because that's the type of shit you understand. Them dudes look at him like an uncle figure, like a like a you know what I'm saying, summer father figure maybe, like you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, like because that's a OG, that's an OG to them, like in their field. But you want to keep bringing in these motherfuckers that don't know shit about these motherfuckers don't know who the fuck Pop Smoke is. These white motherfuckers, man, these motherfuckers don't listen to no motherfucking soul music, no rap music like these players that's out here. Like, come on, man. Y'all got to stop with this bullshit. It's about having representation for the players that got to get out there and risk their lives every fucking day for our entertainment. Hmm. Man, I don't know how to back that up, bro. <laughs> it's bullshit, man. It's fucking, it is, it's bullshit. But I'm not surprised. I mean, it, 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 it incenses me. When I gotta talk about the reason why I'm not surprised, like, like, nigga, why would the fuck would they want us to be happy and thrive and and mm -hmm. and really recognize our fucking worth by showing us that we that right. that they don't showing, want us they don't know, want us by in, showing they don't want us in leadership positions. The quarterback is a leadership position. The head coach, the general manager. Ownership, those are all leadership but, positions. But on some G shit, but on some G shit, fuck, fuck quarterback, fuck quarterback, fuck being on the field. Cause I know, man, you have private conversations about you don't want your child to play football. Mm -hmm. But what if your kid good enough to fucking coach football? He don't see no representation that oh shit, I want to be involved, but I might not be able to play. But I know the X's and O's. Right. I know how to play. You know what I'm saying? I might be good enough to coach, but I don't have no representation that says to me. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And it's bullshit. That's a that's a good point. I mean, the quarterbacks, um, they are. I mean, there's a lot more representation at the position than it has been, you know, in recent years. But and yeah, that ain't I feel shit you. but gestures. No, I, I, I get it. I, I get it. I get it. But if you're talking about 
a young kid seeing the representation, then I can't be mad at that. Like if they like in the NBA, for example, if the NBA said, hey, we're going to make sure that there's 13 to 14 black head coaches out of 30 coaches in the league, even if it's a pandering thing, I don't got a problem with it. As long as a kid that's looking up to the league and saying, who maybe I don't know about basketball, but maybe I know the X's and O's of basketball. Maybe I could look at somebody at that leadership position and know that, hey, I could do the same thing that he can do it. So I'm not going to be mad at the amount of black head coaches in the NBA because of what it brings for the up and coming kid. But. I, it, it starts at the top, bro. Like, I, you know, I, I bring it up every time we have these conversations. And, there and needs why, to be black why, ownership. There needs to be a black owner in this league. You know, the NBA, there's a black owner the in the league. Like, we, But here's the thing about ownership, bro. Mm -hmm. You got to be fucking voted in. I, I get it. I, I, you gotta be fucking voted in by I, the other white motherfuckers. That's a, that's that a don't problem. See your black ass. That's a me. problem. That's a problem. The sit that that's systemic. That's a problem for me. Like how how can how can that get changed? Like how can we change that? I know it's a long that's shot. Different. I know it's a long I mean, shot. But I mean, no, come on. No, it's not even that. It, it is a long shot. But let's let. But let's. But we don't have no fucking answer to that. We you know don't. the real answer. We don't. We you know don't. the real. Do you know the real answer? Fucking stop being racist. Guess what? They ain't gonna yeah. stop. Be they ain't gonna stop doing that. Sure. And and even sometimes I'm even pessimistic about that. They are not gonna stop being no, racist. They're not it gonna... ain't gonna happen. There ain't no pessimism. They ain't gonna stop. You ain't, like ask me to ask me to stop being straight. Shit, not gonna happen. That's how how racism is in their fucking genes. I get it. There's no way I'm turning. There's no way I'm it. turning gay. It ain't the shit ain't happening. I, I get it. Them niggas is not going not be racist. It's 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 systemic as well as it is with those individuals and how they practice hiring shit, coaches bro. and it how just, they hiring people. It just it just is what it is. It's sad and it's depressing and and, and I don't know what's going to happen. You know, hundreds of years after I'm gone, and you know, obviously I don't know what's going to happen then, mm. but. Bruh, it, it's it's nah, man. Yeah, man. It, it, I, it's I just unfortunate. I, I can't. It's pretend, unfortunate. I can't pretend like I'm not outraged. Like I'm like, like, like. Come on, you you paying your you paying your own. You're paying the coach. You're you're offering money to the person you hired to lose games for your football team. Allegedly, for your Allegedly. football team. No, no. I, I I get Allegedly. it. Allegedly, I I get it, but. I, Am I wrong if I say I believe it? <laughs> nah, you can believe what you want. Yeah, I mean, you ain't I, for that. I, I believe he did it. I believe Stephen Ross did it, bro. I, <laughs> okay, I, but then, but then, and and I know, and I know this. I know we on the Brian Flores, you know, train right now because he being done wrong. But if if you can believe that that's been offered to him, then you got to believe the possibility of him taking it. That's one point two million dollars. Of course, of course. And 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 to add injury to insult, mm -hmm. um. Week one, fifty nine ten to Baltimore. Week two, forty three nothing to whoever they played. Mm -hmm. I think it was the Patriots that sure. next week. And again, um, and again, and, they and, were a bad. And team. To your example, they were a bad. And team. To your example, yep. But and to your example, because I don't even remember having that conversation with you. But I, but I was watching something on YouTube where mm -hmm. um, they was t they were talking about it. Where yeah, do you remember that game in two thousand nineteen Monday night mm -hmm. when they looked like they were not prepared to play the Steelers? It was funny that you brought it up. I just didn't. I just didn't want to step on your point. It's funny because I don't remember having that conversation with you. Yeah. But the ESPN niggas remember that conversation vividly. Yeah. There was a one. So that a, was a. So ahead. that was a talking point. That was a yeah. talking point where it seemed like <laughs> the Miami Dolphins were not prepared to play a football game, and then we find out that a offer was made that he can make a hundred thousand dollars. For every game he lose, and that we and we can vividly mark at least one instance mm -hmm. where we know where it was a story that the Miami Dolphins weren't prepared mm -hmm. to play football. It was one play, and I forget the nature of the play, but it just looked like, oh my god! You know what? It's starting to come back to me, bro. It's starting to come back to me. They, it was an all-out blitz on a, I believe a fourth down. I, I don't remember what down it was, but it was an all-out blitz. 
and y'all hit somebody down the field for a touchdown. And I was like, I'm like, y'all serious? Like, like, yeah, they're 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 purposely trying to lose football games. Like that for me was kind of the straw right there for me. Yeah. And to but hear that speaks, this, but that speaks to maybe that Brian Flores took some of that money. And I'm not here to shade Brian. And that's Flores, possible. Right now, that's possible. Right now, this ain't the time for that. Yep. But and I guess I'm already guilty because I said it. But fuck it, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. Um, the, the but the problem, but the problem is, mm-hmm. is that Brian Flores should be coaching and he should be strongly considered just like Eric Bieniemy should be, yeah. just like Pep Hamilton should be, just like Todd Bowles. Byron Leftwich, or like like these oh, guys talk should about be. That Byron Leftwich thing. I, I gotta we talk should about be that being, too, they should be being considered, just like if 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 fucking if fucking uh who's the white coach I'm thinking about that always finds his way to getting a fucking job somewhere is all of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If, if if that if that coach Bill O'Brien go on and on, yeah, the, the Jags in consideration the, somewhere. Yeah, the Jags trying to get Bill O'Brien, and I'm like, wait, you saw Bill O'Brien twice a year. Like, how the hell you think he gonna do for your team? Hey man, it's it's stupidness, hey, man. I I, man. It's it's just hey, stupidness, man. man. No, it's not stupidness. It's, it's systemic fucking racism. It's, it's smart. It's everything. It's, it's not stupid. It, it it's stupid, bro. It's it, I mean, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're yeah. saying, but it's 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 stupid. It's stupid. I mean, and and the fans eat that shit up every time. They eat it we up every do. time. We do. Hey, bro. Hey, man. I, look, man. I, I know we gotta talk about other shit. <laughs> um, Yo, I'm and to, I don't I, even I, know how. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 might, I don't I might even know, how, I don't here, even know how to segue. I, I, I don't I, even know how to segue I, to I, fucking football. I, 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 uh, I might, I might but I guess something. we gotta. Nah, cause because yeah, well, cause, cause I'm gonna be I'm gonna be riled up probably this entire episode because we we, we got to talk about what the hell Jacksonville is doing to Byron Leftwich and and that even has me pissed off. But you'll probably tell me, hey, don't be surprised. It's, it's the same thing. It's all that stuff. And because it, 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 it is because it is it is and, and and I feel you. It's still bullshit. I feel it's you. Still bullshit. Yeah, I gotta call it out. I, I gotta call it out, bro. I gotta call it out. Is this is no excuse why Byron Leftwich should not be the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars? It makes a hundred percent sense. It should have been announced already, huh? It should have been announced already. Yeah, been announced already. It makes like a, it should have been announced already. A hun- It makes a hundred percent sense, bruh. Like why are we why are we doing this? You want to keep the general manager? You want to keep Trembalki? So that's why you don't like, and and. Just so people, you know, understand where I'm going with this. So, Byron Leftwich wants another GM in Jacksonville. And Mm -hmm. people say, well, wait a minute. Like, who gave you the leverage? And my response is, well, I understand because it's Trent Baalke. And if you guys don't know Trent Baalke's history, that dude fires coaches everywhere he goes. When he was in San... And more than that... Uh Uh-huh. And more than that, yeah, yeah, yes, you're right. And more than that, mm-hmm. that motherfucker hired Urban Meyer. Yeah, exactly. exactly. That's enough for me. I don't want no another G. I don't want to work with this dude. This yeah. nigga hired Urban Meyer. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to work with no Trent Bulky. Fuck him. This dude, this dude, this dude. Uh, he made Harbaugh walk. I don't know if he got fired or what, but he left on his watch. Then he hired Tom Sula. Like I never heard of Tom Sula. Got rid of him after one year. Hired Chip Kelly after what Chip Kelly did to the Eagles prior to that. Let him go after one year. And then he comes to Jacksonville for one year. Gets rid of Marone. And then, like you said, hires Urban Meyer. And then Urban Meyer, you know, while he did all that to himself, I think you make a good point. He hired Urban Meyer. To begin with. To begin with, right. So... Yeah, I understand Byron Leftwich's point. I understand trying to negotiate, hey, if I want to coach this team, 
I want a GM who's not going to fire me after one year. Like what? Like what? Shit, what's the problem I appreciate the ball. with that? I appreciate the ball. I get I get what people are saying. Who are you? You you're not even a head coach to be talking about trying to hire fire the people above you. I get where people would be coming from, mm-hmm. but fuck y'all. Nah. The ball um, the ball the balls of Byron Leftwich to understand that he fucking with somebody. That's not going to be in his best interest. That's not going to give him time to put a team together because putting a team together Mm -hmm. is going to take years, not a year, but two, three, Mm -hmm. maybe four or five. Right. Depending, you know, and if we talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars, I mean, come on, man. They they, they, they got some holes, man. Like, let's be, let's keep it a buck. They got some holes. So they. I I bet you if some white coach told Shaq Khan, hey, I need Bulky up out of there, he'd, he'd leap. Right, he leap right away. That's Imagine why. That's like, that's why like, I don't care. That's why I don't care yeah. because if yeah. if another white coach did that and said, "Hey, get bulky up out of there," they would have got his ass up out of there quick in a hurry. But apparently, yeah. Byron Leftwich, who once upon a time was the face of your franchise at one come point, on. like come on. come on, like this makes sense. Come like, on, I, it, come on, like come on. Why is this not the obvious? Why is this not obvious shit? Ugh. You know why? Because they're not in touch. These owners are not in fucking touch. Oh my god, man! It... And maybe they don't want to be. Ugh. I mean, it serves them yeah. better to, to yeah. have the narrative and run the narrative the way they see the narrative yep. to be ran and make it work for them. So, I, who yep. the fuck am I? It's the boys' club, and they're winning. And you know why they winning? Because we still watching the games. We yep. still buying the merchandise. We still doing all the things that would serve them. That would serve them and have them feel like, okay, it don't matter. We could do what the fuck we want. We could do the things the way we want to do it. And they still going to watch. They still going to buy. They still going to come to the games. They still going to talk about it on on every podcast from the biggest one to the Barbershop Sports Talk podcast. All these things are still going to happen regardless of what we do. Mm, So we're going to do what the fuck we want to do. Yep. Yeah. Well. Um, I am interested, and I want to put a button on this Brian Flores thing. I am interested to see what the end game of this is going to be, and if anything else, you know, kind of subsides with this. And I think for certain, and I think we're both in agreement. Um, he's not in the league anymore. Um, he won't be yeah. coaching in the league anymore it. in in any capacity. I don't see it. I don't think he's, I don't see it. I don't think he's even the janitor for any one of these teams. I I don't think yeah. he's doing nothing yeah. with these thirty two teams yeah. ever again. So, um, yeah. So we'll, we'll we'll see how that plays out. Um, I, I I I guess if we're on this topic of coaches and stuff, I, I guess we kind of briefly went through it. Like I don't. The only not that I not that I don't like all the hires so far. Um, like, I don't like the, the Broncos hire. I, I don't like that. And I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to get Aaron Rodgers to come to Denver because that's his boy. And everybody's making a prediction, including myself, that Aaron Rodgers at some point is going to be a Denver Bronco in 2022. Um, the, the, the day ball hire in New York, I'm, I'm not upset at it because he came from Buffalo, mm-hmm. Buffalo, um, has been successful in the last four mm-hmm. or five years. So I'm, yep. I'm, I'm not upset with that particular hire. Um, I'm upset with the Bears hire because they got a defensive coordinator that couldn't stop Jacksonville from scoring on the final game of the season when they had to make the playoffs. Um, and then somebody, get, oh, the Josh McDaniels thing. Um, I ain't mad at that. Uh, I'm mad at that. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad at that, bro. I mean, uh, and I thought Rich Passaccia did a good job down the stretch um, with everything that was going on with them from, you know, the coach getting fired for racism and all that stuff from Arnett mm. and from the rug stuff. Um, I, if if they would have kept Passaccia, I, I would have been cool with that. Like, but for Josh, McDan- for Josh McDaniels... And and it's not just it's not just that because of Basaccia. Remember when he interviewed for the Colts job and then he accepted it and then told him, um, you know what, I don't want to accept it no more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. 
should have been a turnoff. Like, you should, like, you should be, well, I don't want to say you should be banned from not getting a coaching job, but you shouldn't be trusted. Right. I, I should say you shouldn't be trusted. And I guess the Raiders trust Josh McDaniel. I, I, I don't know. Um... I uh, know. Well, know. I'll say this. Mm-hmm. Um, I get I get the Josh McDaniels hire because Josh McDaniels um, won Patriots pedigree, the Bill Belichick tree, that thing. Um, he's a charismatic dude. Like that. That's what they. That's the thing. He's an offensive guy. They obviously want to focus on the offense thing. It's in Vegas. Um, he. I, it's 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 kind of like a balance between. I, what people think they want to see from the Raiders, which is offense, mm-hmm. um, that he'll take them, he'll take them to the next level. Yep. And he's a known name, and they're clearly looking for known names. That 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 seems to be the thing they want a known name in Vegas. Yeah, um, gotta make a splash, right? The, yeah, he's probably one of the more known names. Um, and I don't necessarily remember who was in the. Uh, in the carousel, I know who I know the black players who were in the carousel, but I don't necessarily remember all the, you know, the white players that were in the carousel that could have been that could have been hired. But I would imagine mm-hmm. of those right. names, Josh McDaniels was probably one of the more popular names. Um, so I, I get it. Yeah. Um, do I think he was the best hire? Um, I don't know. That remains to be seen, obviously. Nah. But um, I would have loved to seen, you know, just because I want to see my people off the board. Like, obviously, I, I would have loved to seen anybody, Pep, uh, the enemy, uh, yeah. Byron Leftwich, whoever, whoever. Yeah, whoever. Ty Bowles. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, whoever. Jim just Caldwell. Quick, just get some of my, get my people on the fucking board, man. Jim like, this Caldwell. This is the problem. Yeah, Jim, Jim Caldwell. Like, get I, my people on the board, man. Jim Caldwell would have been so great in Chicago with Justin Fields. I, I, don't, I don't know why. But I, I just get that sense that he, he would have been so great bringing up Justin Fields and developing him. But, you know, yeah. they, they decided to go another direction. Um, and you Is know, Jim Caldwell looking? Is he still actively looking? I don't know that he's actively looking. I, I just, yeah, I just that, think that, it's I more want, so people you... are more advocating for him, including myself. I'm, okay. I'm advocating yeah, for Jim right. Caldwell. Mm-hmm. The reason why I asked is because, you know, we, we looked over that article that I saw online, I think it was last week or maybe two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and I noticed that I noticed that he was not on that list. So when you brought him up, yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, well, but, but then my thing is that Jim Caldwell is one, is one of the obvious people that should be on a list like this, mm-hmm. but he wasn't. So then yeah. I, was, I was, you know, just thinking back, maybe he's not even looking to coach right now, you know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what his situation is. He took the Lions to the playoffs twice. With yep. an eleven and five record, a nine and seven record, and then the two other years that he coached there, went nine and seven the first year, and then took a slight step back at seven and nine, but then was nine and seven again before they let him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know he shouldn't have been fired. We know, we know. I mean, we know. We we. It's the shit we've been saying since it happened, and since you know, and when it comes up, he shouldn't have been fired. We mm-hmm. we we look. We know, man. Like it, like, just, like Detroit. Like Detroit can afford to let good coaches go in their history. Uh, like, like, it, it, I mean. I mean, we we say that they can't, but I mean, what is what is what does it really mean? What does all this shit really mean? The fucking Detroit fans are still gonna fucking vote. For, I mean, still root for their for their team. Good coach, bad coach, bad team are indifferent. They're still gonna root for their team. Yeah. So they might as well just bring in who the fuck they want to want, who they want to bring in for their own races ne- or nepotism purposes. Yeah. yeah, and and how they've been since he left. Been some fans still support. My point is, my I get point it. Is I get it. I, I I get it. I get it. I just I, I just have to call it out. I know. I've I've been I've been regurgitating I, all this look, stuff, I, but yeah, I I, I got to call it out, bro. I, I can't just I can't just let this shit go unnoticed, man. It, it's just it's just frustrating sometimes, man. All right, I'm not. I'm not gonna be frustrated no more. Um, hey man, you could be whatever you want to be, bro. I'm here. No, nah, I'm. 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 I'm gonna chill out. I'm gonna chill out for a minute. Um, I, I'll say this though. Um, and and as much as I like both general manager hires in Minnesota and Chicago, um, certainly didn't like the way you know Chicago, the direction they went. Um, if Jim Harbaugh gets this Vikings job, I'm not gonna be mad at that either, man. Um, he has proven with his resume that he can turn 
mediocre quarterbacks into above average quarterbacks. You know, look what he did in San Francisco. And then kind of look what San Francisco did after he left. Um, it's night and day. Um, I, I wouldn't be upset with Jim Harbaugh in Minnesota. You think Kirk Cousins mm. could be a better quarterback with Jim Harbaugh there? I think he can. That's just me. And yeah, I mean, look, man. I I'll be honest with you, man. I I'm a little I, I'm a little weary of coach talk um, and, and of anybody that's not a black coach right this second. I'm a little weary of it. Yeah. Um, I can understand I, I, because we're zero for four right now, and there's five positions open left. Right? I think there's five left. And Brian Flores is out. Basically, yeah. So, so forgive me if I'm and, a little. I, they, don't, I don't. I don't care. And they, and they already. And, and they already. Um, they already killing the enemy for uh, Sunday's performance. So yeah, you know they're gonna use yeah, that. They, gonna, they're gonna I, use that excuse. Yeah, they're I, gonna use that excuse. I asked. I asked that question when we when we go over the games. Can we talk about Tom Brady retiring? Um, I'm glad he's out. I'm glad he's getting the yeah, hell out good of the league. Yeah, get up Tom on Brady. Uh, well, first it was reported on Saturday, I believe it was. It was that Saturday. Tom Brady, yeah. that he was going to retire. Then he came out later and was like, "I never said that." Um, His dad it came was out then and said I knew, that. Oh, yeah, whoever. It was then I knew that um, that he did officially retire, and it brought me back to a conversation we had just last week, mm-hmm. where you was like, you know, you kind of felt adamant that he was go- going to, you know, play another year. He didn't like the taste in his, the taste that that losing taste that yeah. he had mm-hmm. after the loss to uh, to the Rams. And um, I saw it a totally different way for this reason, man. Um, look, he's a competitor and all those things, and those things are true. But I don't think I don't think he liked uh, being chased around by a 40, 45-year-old man by the likes of young Aaron Donald and Von Miller and Leonard Floyd and, you know, and that. I don't mm-hmm. think he enjoyed that. Um if the offensive line can't block for him the way he needs to be blocked for, it's not yeah. fun for him. I and granted, it was injuries. Him. I mean, it's not like that was the same offensive line that was there all year long. They I mean, just we, happen you, to be injured. You're only talking about Tristan Wirth. Tristan Wirth was out. That's all you're talking about. I, you're only he, talking about Tristan Wirth. I, I, and I get I he's get a big part of the yeah, offensive yeah, line. Yeah, he makes a big but difference. You're only talking about one guy. Yeah. He don't like being chased around, man. Don't mm-hmm. no, no 45-year-old dude wants to be chased around. And, and even in his... And his, uh, I didn't read his whole little comments, and you know, but it's, but the quote read something to, read something to the like of, uh, it's time to let these young athletes do their thing. Mm. I don't think he was talking about just the quarterbacks. I think he was talking about uh, these young motherfuckers that was running my ass around. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I can't say I'm shocked that he's retiring. Um, I'm not shocked at all. Cause yeah. I, I, I said, yeah, I, like yeah I said, I I'm, said, I'm not shocked. Um, but I, I, I did think that after that loss, I thought, okay, I think he gives it one more year. And even he said himself some years ago, he would like to play until he's 45 years old. He's 44 now going on 45, you know, by the time the season starts. So that's why I said, you know what? Maybe he was right. Maybe that time is coming where he turns 45, this coming season starts, he gives it one last go, and maybe he has another chance to go out on top. But speaking of going out on top, this is probably, if not, I I might put this year for him statistically, I might put this number two next to, obviously, the undefeated season back in 2007. I I might put this season statistically number two um, obviously, to the 07 undefeated Patriots. I don't know about you, but um, he went out statistically. On top. I mean, if he, I mean, if you're saying statistically, he wasn't. St- I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not going to rank statistical years. What I will say is that while he was the best statistically statistical quarterback this year, mm-hmm. um, he wasn't being talked about like he was the best quarterback this year. He was one of the top quarterbacks this year, mm-hmm. but he wasn't con- being considered the best quarterback this year. He was the old guy yeah. who was playing at a high level for certain. But yeah. um, I mean, look, look. My I, my point is, my point is, is that he he will probably still be a good statistical quarterback 
with a if you got a team around him. Yeah. Till he's about fifty, he could probably do it till he was about fifty. But the but the impact wouldn't be the same. We would still respect him for who he was. Right. He's, he's, his, he's, his legend is already cemented. There's like how we've been doing for the last three back. years, basically, because what There's he's nothing. done is unprecedented. Even from when he was so, forty-two years old till now. What he's done is unprecedented. But there's nothing there's nothing he can do that's going to upgrade his legacy at this point. Yeah. There's like, it's like I was saying last week there's nothing you you've already been the oldest nigga in the game yeah. with the the best statistical old nigga in the game. There's literally nothing. I mean, yeah, you could win another Super Bowl, but what does that really do as far as upgrade? You've already won more Super Bowls than any franchise yeah. in it. He shattered what records. He do? shattered the records. What pretty could much. you literally there's literally nothing he can do that will make us say, "Damn." You know, he just he went up another lo- a right. notch in his legacy. Right. It, 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 he's playing for. He's really just playing until he feels it's like shit. I don't want to play no more, and I think that's why he retired. What about this um, idea that um, some people thought that he was going to change his mind after the false report on Saturday? Oh no! Nah, see, I knew he was retired. I like I said, I I I couldn't. In fact, I couldn't text you fast enough because I was so busy working this fucking weekend. Mm. I couldn't text you fast enough with the I told you text. I told you he was going to retire. I couldn't. Mm. I just couldn't get around to texting you. But I was all out in my mind. I was like, told told you this nigga's going to retire. Mm. Well, once they reported it and they had to renege on it, I knew. Okay, he's made his decision. But folks was like, he didn't want it to be leaked. He didn't want it to be leaked. Right, he didn't want it to be leaked. Yeah, that's all. He wanted to do it his way. He wanted to go out on his own terms. And I understand that. I respect that. Um, But the idea that he was just going to change his mind and say, oh, you know what? Y'all tried to leak this info on me after, you know, not wanting me to do it my own way. You know what? Just to show y'all, I'm going to come back for one more year. I, I didn't believe that that was going to happen. What did that? Like, yeah, but I, I said, what would that even prove? I, I, I didn't I didn't even, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I didn't believe that. Mm-hmm. I, I, he was retired. It's just that he wanted to do it on his own terms. He wanted to express how he felt um, with announcing his retirement. And so, you know, we, we, we had to respect that. So, Is there a rule or something that only one quarterback can make the Hall of Fame or something? I'm, in, a, in a year? I don't think there's a rule, but I'm glad you brought this up. I so I was going to ask you um, this conspiracy theory that um, they'll leave Ben off the first ballot right. just so that they can make the whole uh, celebration about Tom Brady. Like, I, I, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's a conspiracy theory. Um, if you a Hall of Famer and you first ballot, then you should be deservedly so to get on the first ballot unless unless you you know you're Terrell Owens and the media don't like unless you you're Antonio you Brown um oh yeah Antonio Brown yeah, well yeah that's another story well, too that's another topic. um but uh look look Ben Roethlisberger is going to be a first ballot hall of famer with Tom Brady mm-hmm. um obviously obviously Ben Roethlisberger is not going to get all of the praise and shine that he should have gotten if Tom Brady didn't retire, but he's going to sit, he's going to, this, this is going to be about Tom Brady first, mm-hmm. then, then about Ben Roethlisberger second. And you know what? Yep. Such as his, such as Ben Roethlisberger's career, because Tom Brady mm-hmm. is the GOAT. So, you know, whatever. Like, they'll both get in first ballot like they should yeah. be. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's just what it's going to be. Didn't two receivers get in just recently? I don't know, Did, I, I'm, but I'm just talking about I, no, I, I, the I, caliber I, I, of. I, I, I get what you're saying, but I'm I'm just getting to the point that, regardless of position, um, if you got like, if you got two kickers that sure fire Hall of Fame, put two kickers in the damn Hall of Fame in the same year on the first ballot. Like it, it, it shouldn't it, it shouldn't be that hard. Like, I mean, yeah, how many people, I, how many people get in? Like eight per year. Eight people per year get in, right? So mm, it's, it's 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 room. It's it's gonna be room for it's gonna be room yeah, for Ben. Like, it's gonna be room. In for short, mm-hmm. yeah. In short, there'll be there'll be two Hall of Fame first ballot quarterbacks going in in two thousand. Possibly what is three. Uh, Twenty seven. Possibly three. Possibly three. Who who? 
it, it depends on what Aaron Rodgers does because some people are saying oh, he oh, might just he might oh, just walk oh. away, which I don't think he's gonna walk away. I, I think Aaron I Rodgers think is so still either. gonna play. I think he'll at least play a year, at least. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but congratulations to Tom Brady. Let me just say that congratulations. I don't want. I don't like Tom Brady on the field, but as a as, now that he's retired, much like how I felt about Ray Lewis, um, now that he's officially out of the NFL, I gotta give respect where respect is due. Uh, Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback yep. to ever play the game. Maybe not the most talented, arm strength, those types of things. Right. But uh, he is the greatest to ever do it. And there is no debating it. Um, I, I wish, uh, I, you know, I, I would have to be a Tom Brady stand or, or cape well, for somebody to say to me, he's not the greatest of all time. He's the greatest of all time. Yeah. At um, quarterback. My, my, my favorite moment of um, Brady was um, my team beating them to get to the Super Bowl in, in 2012. Um, but other than that, all the comebacks – you know the the twenty eight to three comeback against the Falcons. Obviously, that's forever gonna be you know for the next hundred years. The moment the moment when Drew Bledsoe got injured and he had to come in. Mm hmm. That's a moment too. Yeah. Um, the undefeated season, even though it didn't end the way they wanted to end. Um, you know, he, he he's the face of that. So, um, yeah. so props to the you know. Props to the legend, man. Props to the yeah, yeah. Props to the legend. Props to the goat. All right, uh, I'm ready to talk football now. I, I think I'm yeah, man. I think I'm I'm okay now. Mm. I'm not I'm not upset. I'm not riled up anymore. I'm I'm, I'm ready to talk some games, bro. So, uh, so the Cincinnati Bengals are in the Super Bowl. Is this Cincinnati this a dream? Bengals are in the Super Bowl, and and but it's not, bro. I told, I said it to you, and now I, I picked the Chiefs. Let me be clear. Yeah, we stand. picked the Chiefs now. I picked <laughs> the Chiefs, but I said it. I said, bro, it was part of our. It was part of the reason why our episode was so fucking long last week, bro. This team just beat the Chiefs. They just beat them in the same fashion that they beat them this week. Behind, yes. coming from yes. behind, yeah. Come, coming from and, and, and just being dogs. This team is just is. I don't want to say just as good. It feels blasphemous to say that they're just as good as the Chiefs, but they beat him twice when it kind of mattered. Now so it's like we can officially say now. We can officially say now that the Bengals have the Chiefs' number. We we couldn't we couldn't say that before Sunday's game. We couldn't say that. But now we well, can see I that. still want to say they got their number after beating them in two games. But I will say that they beat them in two games, and we got to acknowledge it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know that two games or even three games in that other example. And I don't want to harken back to last week's conversation. Um, counts as having because that's number. why I that's why I say. said it though. But I, I, I just want you to know that's why I said that because sure. of the other example that we talked about. But go ahead. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that that's necessarily having their number. I don't. I don't. That's not my belief. But what I will say is that this team, as blasphemous as it sounds to say, this team is just as good as the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, and here they are in the Super Bowl. That team did not give a fuck about uh who Patrick Mahomes was and who this team was to the NFL. Meaning, you know, perennial Super Bowl appearances, wins, mm -hmm. obviously, a win, obviously. Like they didn't care about that. They care about the fact that I'm here and I'm just as good. Joe Burrow with his energy, McPherson with his energy, Jamar Chase, obviously. Um, like that, we're just we can play with y'all we can play with y'all and there you go they played with them and they won and now they're in the super bowl in a super bowl where we felt like it should have been kansas city and la yeah i was gonna say i'm disappointed that i didn't get what i wanted bro i wanted but, Chiefs but here's the i know i know but here's the part i know but here's the thing to it here's uh -huh. the thing to it though mm -hmm. and, and 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 i'm disappointed too and i don't like that another afc north team besides the pittsburgh steelers is in the super bowl but here's the thing if you think for a second and i'm not picking the cincinnati Bengals to win that's what i'm saying think for a I'm second not that joe burrow <laughs> but if you think for a second that that team can't play with the rams you're sadly mistaken I'm not, saying, play with the Rams. I'm not saying that they can't play with the Rams. And and, and before I get to that, um, just on the game against Kansas City. So 
for me, there's there's two people I want to give a shout out to. Um, I want to give a shout out to the defense because defensively, I felt like they were half the reason that they won this football game. Um, it looked like this was going to be a blowout, right? Like Kansas City, first three drives, you know, touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. You go up 21-3, to three, and at that point, I was thinking like, oh, snap, like, this is uh, this is about to be a route. Like this, <laughs> this is this is what it's gonna be like. So, um, so the so the Bengals defense. Um, I, I noticed it in the second half. Um, they decided to rush three guys right on several occasions, and they made sure that if Mahomes was gonna have his time, he was gonna look and see, okay, who can I get this ball to? And if he started to run. They made sure that they had a spy waiting for him. Um, that that was a big game, uh, game changer right there in terms of switching up the defense and forcing Mahomes to make a decision. And most of the time, he couldn't make that decision. Um, um, in addition to the fact that there were some balls that like could have been caught, right? Like Kelsey had one over his shoulder that he could have got and he couldn't get that one. And there was another one where um, it was thrown right to Tyreek Hill and he missed that one too. So um, there were passes that they missed, but it was also coverage on the Bengals part that um, had Patrick Mahomes kind of scrambling a bit, a bit there. So um, the second person I want to give a shout out to, Joe Burrow. And... I thought the line played decent on Sunday because I, I was more focused on how the offensive line was going to play, and they played a decent game. At the same time, Joe Burrow was able to get out of a couple of sacks on a couple of occasions, like the one where he should have been got. Like the dude was right there, had him wrapped up, and he was able to get out of that one. And then I forget, maybe it was Chris Jones that was chasing him and he was able to outrun Chris Jones and, and get a first down. And there was another play where he had to run for another first down. I thought those two plays right there, when they were making their comeback, I think it was 13 to 21, I think. Those two plays where he escaped the rush, I thought were, you know, big difference makers. And he he helped his offensive line um, in the process of doing that also. So... Um, shout out Joe Burrow, man. Um, the dude, the dude swag, man. Uh, the dude got the chain with the black uh, turtleneck, and you know, this it's just something about this dude swag. Like, I, it's like I want, it's like I want to like Joe Burrow, but I hate the Bengals. Like, that's kind of how I feel mm -hmm. about it. All right, so let me say this. Um... I am I am sick of you hop ons. All you all you all of a sudden Bengals fans, you get on my nerves. So how many did you see? You. How many you saw around the way? Um, well, I only seen one. Well, let me say this: I saw one with a T Higgins jersey. Mm -hmm. That they, they, but they, I don't know this person, so maybe they have always been a fan. Right. But the fact that all of a sudden they're showing, you starting up, to see it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't like it. I don't yeah. like that. Um. I, I, so I, I guess the ma a, a major talking point of this game was uh, the Cincinnati Bengals uh, get a screen right before halftime uh, to make it 10-21, and then the Chiefs march right back up the field, and yep. they have the option to kick a field goal, but yep. they instead – Go for the touchdown. Do not get it. Go into halftime twenty-one ten. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say that that gives that gave Cincinnati the momentum that they needed to go into the locker room and say, you know, yeah. we 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 still in this. We in this. Um, in your eyes, mm -hmm. uh, do you you take the three right? You take the three right there. If that's if it's me. Yeah. If it's me, I'm yeah, taking yeah. the three. And I right. don't know if they were being greedy. I don't know if they just wanted to go for the kill. I mean, you and I, we talk about, you know, being aggressive. And if you think you're the better team, then, you know, go for it. But I, right. I, I, I just thought in that moment, I think you take the three, you go up 24-10. 24-10, right. Yeah, you go up 24-10 and you get the ball to start the second half, right? So mm -hmm. if you score another mm -hmm. touchdown, 
you're now up thirty one to ten. Yeah. So right. it went right. from up, so it went from being potentially thirty one to ten to it's still twenty one to ten. And mm-hmm. then you get the ball yeah. to start and you go three and out. So I think and after Patrick that, Mahomes play like shredded ass. Yeah. in the second half. Yeah, I think the that, moment that, that's not gonna go. Oh no! Oh no! No no! We we will will respect. We gonna talk about Patrick Mahomes now. Yeah. But I thought. But I thought the moment they came out of the second half and that drive failed for the Chiefs, that was the moment I knew. Okay, this this is about to be a game. Cause they they yep. had their moments and they yep. just they messed up not once but twice they messed up. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Um, yeah, Patrick Mahomes played like straight booty cheeks in that second half, and um, I'm I, I you know I don't pretend to um, have the deep dive into what happened. I know this Bama, I know this Bama looked shook. He looked like he was second guessing about what to do. Yeah. Um, Andy Reid kind of took some accountability about the play calling, and and, and yeah. that's fine and dandy, right. and that's fine and dandy. Mm-hmm. But you not about to tell me on the eye test that Patrick Mahomes looked a little flustered, and and it showed in his play. Yeah, I think it so came to blame both of these guys um, because yeah, sure. because once once they went three man rush, where was the adjustments after that? I I saw no. I saw no adjustments whatsoever to the three man rush that they, that the Bengals was giving them, and they just kept playing like, okay, we the Chiefs, we do this. This is what we do at home in the playoffs. Right. They 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 just right. had that attitude, and I, I I you know there's been a debate about the last drive for the Chiefs before they tied it up to go into overtime. Um, I actually didn't mind. Wasting the clock there, even though it almost didn't work because, you know, we fumbled and almost lost mm-hmm. the ball and the game was going to end right there. But it's kind of like what the Bengals did to them in the regular season on the last drive for the Bengals, where I think they, they took a couple penalties, they killed clock, and in their mind they was like, nah, we're not going to let Patrick Mahomes get the ball back. It was as if the Chiefs were saying in that drive, we're not going to let Joe Burrow get this ball back. So yeah. I didn't mind them doing what they did, and it almost failed on them. Um, but you know, and and just for the people that had the conversation about changing the overtime rules, hey, some defense was played in the overtime. That's what you do. There's another side of the ball, people. You can play defense, and you can get your offense the ball back. And and that's what Sudden happened. Death, man. That's what Sudden happened, death, man. Stop being pussy. Sudden death. You want to go back um, to the old ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, we talked about it briefly earlier in the show. Yeah. Eric Bieniemy. Hit. Where Where does his coaching? How much it is? First of all, how much of this blame does he take, and how does it affect his coaching stock? In your opinion. Um. And like I said, it's okay to blame both guys, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes. I think you have to put Eric Bieniemy in the same conversation because. If you're the coordinator and you see what's happening out there, it's your job to adjust the game plan and, you know, kind of take what the defense is giving you. And I didn't see even, that. Go ahead. Even if Andy Reid, even if it's acknowledgeably true that Andy Reid is the play caller. Uh, that's, yeah. that's clear. With, yeah, well. That's clear he's the play caller. Is he? Yes. He said, though, I could have gave them better plays. Oh, okay. You're, you're, you're basing it off of what he yeah. said. You're basing it off of what he yeah. said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because the enemy does call plays. I don't want to. I'm sure he has you know, some some certain responsibilities, but when it comes down to it. Because on the sideline, he's he's in the sheet and he's calling plays. Like, I, I physically see him do this you figure, when okay. they show him shots. So, that's why it's I was been, questioning. It's been, that's why I was okay, questioning it's, there. Okay. Mm-hmm. What what's been said? What's been said? Not not just in this presser, but just in conversations. Yeah. You know. You know, is that he is that Andy Reid is the primary play caller. And that's not to say that again. That's not to say that Eric Bieniemy calls no plays. Right. It's just to say that maybe. Right. Um. This. Uh, I, I guess my argument is is mm-hmm. how um how is his stat how is his stock affected when Andy is out here visibly. I mean, obviously, you know, he's out here defending the enemy. Right. No, 
you that would was think my play calling. Right. You would think that if the narrative is is that Andy Reid is the primary play caller, that his stock his being Eric Bieniemy, his stock is not affected. Um but, not that much. I ain't gonna say not affected at all. Right. But certainly not to the level that people are talking about it in Twitter spaces. Sure, and sure. Things and, I've and, been and, and people are alluding to. to that, oh man, they're gonna now that people are now gonna hold this performance against him getting a head coaching job this year. And I think it does put a little bit of dent into it because in my view, he does call the plays. I physically watch him on TV call plays. Now, if you're Andy Reid and you sit up there and you take responsibility, okay, that's what you're supposed to do. You're the head coach at the end yeah. of the day. Right. If the enemy right. calls something and Andy Reid kind of sees something different, it's on Andy Reid to say, hey, the buck stops with me. At the end of the day, I got to make the final right. call here. Uh, right. Eric, you're going to have to... You know, mix something else up. You're gonna have to call something different. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I, I think that his, I think his stock gets a dent in it a little bit. Um, but you know, as I expected, people are gonna use his performance as a reason for him to not be eligible for a head coaching job this summer. So, you know, yeah. I, I I I don't oh. think it's right. Um, I don't. Let me let me take that back. I don't. I don't think right. that is. I don't think it's right. I think it's justifiable, um, but he should, he should still, still get be a job. Interviewed. Yeah, he still should be qualified for a head coaching job at some point, even if it's not this year. Then nah, fuck that. He should get a job this year. I'm sorry. No, that one game does not dispel the three or four years of this offense doing what this offense doing with him being in control mm -hmm. or having some control. Right. No, he should still get a job. He dropped the ball. This is a dent in his stock. Right. He should still get a job. Okay. I don't I don't got a problem with that, but if he did have to wait another year, then I'm not going to, you know, toss tables and, you know, do all that stuff. Um, but, you know, for me I just I just got to stay consistent cuz if I'm upset about um Who's who's the Colts uh, D coordinator? Um, uh huh. Yeah, if whoever it, the, yeah. whoever that was, whoever that was. If I'm upset about that, then I I, I, I gotta stay consistent with what happened on Sunday with the Chiefs. Um, but I think the big difference is is that one you're talking about a regular season game that kept the Colts out the playoffs, right? And you're talking about a a a them that them being in the AFC Championship and also having already having a chip, right? Facts and all. Facts. It, yeah, mm -hmm. this is yeah. This ain't the stare. This ain't the same thing. He should still have a job. He should have a job. He should have a job over that guy in Indianapolis who got this Chicago Chicago job. I think it was you said. Uh no, it was the um, uh where did he go? Yeah, I, I forget because um, okay, wherever he went, he shouldn't have a job over yeah. Airbnb, and that's just the fact. You're right. right. It was the Chicago um, job. It was the Chicago. Okay, job. you're right. You're right. Um, and I, I guess to put a button on this game, I, I think if I had to put a button on the game, uh, the Chiefs were complacent and the Chiefs and the Bengals were hungry. And when you're hungry, you got to eat. So my closing point to this is that as a Ravens fan, I can no longer watch a Bengals-Ravens game and say, I have Justin Tucker and they don't because... That kid, Evan McPherson, that dude mm -hmm. is, like, on some mm -hmm. kind of early, like, you know, early career Tucker kind of level right now. Yeah. Like, he's kicking everything, yeah. and everything is, like, money right now. Um, they, they got a kicker, bro. They got a kicker. Yeah. They, they got – Justin yeah. Tucker has competition at the kicker spot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not that, you know, Boswell, you know, Boswell's good too. I mean, and, and, but, and even the guy in Cleveland is, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. But Tucker is just, Tucker is just that dude for me. I mean, you're talking about 60 something yard yeah, field goals. You know obviously. what I'm saying? We know who the best kicker in the league is, but right. they sit here and act like Evan McPherson and Boswell ain't on their heels. That's just not, yeah. you know, that's just not the truth. Yep. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the NFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what so when they were down by ten points, it was what it was seventeen seven uh in the middle of the third quarter. Um I, I ain't I ain't gonna lie, bruh. I 
I was ready for all of the uh, Stanley Wilson references, even though they did reference Stanley Wilson. I don't know if, if for people that don't know uh, Stanley Wilson, that was the Bengals running back from the 88 uh, Bengals Super Bowl team that um, was sniffing, what was he, sniffing cocaine the night before the Super Bowl? And uh, the coach no. decided <laughs> I, that... Uh, I promise you I don't know that story. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Yo. I promise I, you okay. I do not know that okay. story. I'm not even going to cap. Okay. Yo. Um, so, Stanley Wilson was the running back for the Bengals in 88 um, when they were going up against the Niners in the Super Bowl. What happened, the, to, Icky? What happened to Icky Woods? God, Lee. Yeah. Icky, Icky was at the game on Sunday. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. But, oh, um, for real? Yeah. He was at the game on Sunday. Yeah. You, you know he was there. I thought you were about to tell him. But nah. Oh, shit. I, I I don't even know what Icky Woods looked like. I just remember Icky Woods in in in, in that time and the Icky right. Shuffle and Yeah, he 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 way too much, but you know, he's you know, he alive. Who so. am I? That man Yeah, and who am I? I nigga, you weigh how much you wanna weigh, nigga. I ain't that my that ain't my call. No nah. That nigga lived his life. Nigga oldish, you know, that nigga ain't no young. He can yeah, be as fat as he, he wanna he's be. Still, he's oh. still doing the icky shuffle. He's still doing it, but Yeah. Um, yeah, do your shit. Get your shit off. Yeah, but the the story um that people on Twitter was referencing about Stanley Wilson was that the night before that Super Bowl in eighty eight, he was caught sniffing cocaine and the coach had a tough decision to make about whether to play him in the Super Bowl or not. And I think at the last moment, um, he decided that he was a healthy scratch. And people were compl- saying that had he been in the game, they might have won that Super Bowl. I think that was the that uh-huh. was the Montana comeback one. Montana. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So folks were complaining that had he not sniffed coke the night before, that they would have won that Super Bowl. <laughs> so. Um, hey man, I, <laughs> I, I think they should let him play. So. Yeah, he might have still been great. <laughs> you know, you never know. But, but, yeah. but yeah, Rams and um, Niners. But yeah, I was I was ready for Niners and Bengals. Um, I, I was I was ready for that. And um, and then and then your boy Stafford uh, makes those plays and Cooper Cup. And and if I didn't make this clear last week, um, I'm gonna make it clear right now. And I know it's a regular season award. It's not a playoff award. Cooper Cup is the league MVP. He's my league MVP. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna just leave it mm-hmm. at that. Okay, yeah. No this I I don't I honestly forgot I forgot an MVP conversation existed at this stage of the game I ain't sure. to. Sure. Um but, but I'm I'm just going at the last that. week. I'm not against it. Yeah. I'm not against it. Last, not against last it. week I'm not against it. last week and then this week yeah, bro. Like, Cooper. I mean, he got the triple crown, bro. He definitely got the triple crown. Yeah, you know. So yeah. who am I? Yeah, he. But I, but I, I made that confirmation for myself after the, the, the bomb that uh, Stafford threw to him to uh, mm-hmm. win the game last week. So, win the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, man. I um, need to. I mean, you talking about the the get uh, Cooper Cup is that dude Matthew Stafford, obviously. Yeah, we're not gonna sit here and act like uh, Odell Beckham didn't make some clutch catches. Oh yeah, one on one. Odell Beckham, uh, yeah, Odell Beckham is still that dude, man. And I get that he's not the main option on that team, right? Uh, um, especially with the year that Cooper Cup is have was having or is having. Mm-hmm. Um, but to sit here and act like uh, Odell Beckham hasn't made a um, a big contribution to this team since he's been there. Von Miller as well, but specifically Odell Beckham because I'm thinking about those third down catches where they are forced mm-hmm. to single cover Odell Beckham and he's just consistently winning, uh, winning that battle against uh, Mosley or whoever whoever else was guarding him um, yeah. in that game. Yeah. Um, he's got he's got to be recognized. He's got to be recognized for what he is, and he's still that dude. He's still a good wide receiver. He still has the potential to be a number one receiver on the right team, mm-hmm. and he should be acknowledged as that. Yeah, that that was Cleveland fucking him up. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. But but I, I came to that conclusion long before you know they got into the playoffs and stuff. Like yeah, you know him and Baker, they just. It just didn't yeah. mesh. It, it just didn't fit well. So, um, so but you're right. Odell Beckham 
um, is certainly balling too in these playoffs. Um, and, and that has to be noted and respected. And, you know, for people that, you know, been slandering him since his giant days, um, y'all, y'all gonna have to hush that now. Cause you know, this dude, he, he is, he is helping the Rams get to this point. And, and let's be honest, bruh, um, this path to the Super Bowl was, it's on a silver platter. It's, you know, it can't get no better than that. I mean, Dallas gets knocked out early. You beat the Bucks at, you know, in their place. And you don't have to go to Green Bay. And all you got to do is come home, win that one, and you're basically at the crib for the Super Bowl. Like, that, it's, it, it was all there for them, you know, when, you know, once the divisional round wrapped up. It was all there for them, so. And, and you know, Shout out to the 49ers who fought back. Debo Samuel Samuels is a grown ass man on that fucking football field, and he should be uh, honored for his contribution. Um, but this, the stars, the stars. I said it when uh, for the 49ers got the last drive, mm-hmm. and the 49ers got the you know kick off whatever. And I'm like the stars. And Aaron Donald get that pressure that puts Jimmy Garoppolo in that situation to have a throw. Aaron throw to try to avoid a sack. Mm-hmm. Um, and is that was that the right play, or do you take the sack in your opinion, Jimmy in Jimmy Garoppolo's in Jimmy Garoppolo's situation? Um, that's a tough one, but I would say that he he knew that his man was in that area. I I believe that's why he threw it the way he did because he knew his guy was in that area. Um, mm-hmm. So with that being said, I will lean more I lean more so towards that that was the right play because you take a sack, you're losing yardage, and it's fourth down. And that's, that's not where you want to be with the game on the line. You at least want right. to give yourself a chance. Like it, I don't know what I don't know what distance that was, but if it was third and six, um, I would like to keep it at fourth and sixth or shorter. Fourth and sixth. Right. You, you, you know what right. I'm saying? So, um, right. yeah, it, it got intercepted, but it wasn't like he threw it right to the guy. I mean, it went right through his man's hands there. So, I mean, he threw it a little high. He threw it a little high. A little, yeah, a little, a little high. A yeah. little, little high. Yeah. But you know, he was he was, you, trying, to he was gotta, trying to make a play. He was trying to make a play. Trying to make something happen. Yeah, yeah that's, he, that's I just all. saw he was getting killed. And as I a result, he was getting a lot of flag. And as a result. The Trey Lance era is going to start in 2022 for the 49ers. Yep. Yep. So, so it's Rams and Bengals, man. Uh, Rams and Bengals. Didn't see this one coming, bro. <laughs> I ain't going to hold um, you. Well, we got I, one, right? And, I, <laughs> and, and, and if I'm being honest, I'm glad that the Rams are there, you know, being home with, all, with the yep. halftime show and all that going on. Yep. So I'm glad it was the Rams that we were right about. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I even I ain't gonna lie, man, cause I I just like to be right about shit, man. But I I said, I mean, the Bengals, man, they had a fucking shot. They had a better shot. They had a better shot to upset, and and then for all intents and purposes, they upset. Yeah, they did well, upset them. Can we talk about that because we ran out of time last week, and we just kind of do our opinions. Out I don't want to run out of time this week. But go ahead. No, sure. But I, I, I wanted to explain why I thought the Niners had a better shot as a road team to upset the Rams over the Bengals. And for me, it was just simple. You know, that's a team that they know well. They're division rivals. They got six straight wins against them. Um, it's in, not in their city, but it's in their same state where they had mm-hmm. Niners fans like 60% capacity in there, right? So yeah. it felt like it was going to be a home game for the Niners. So that's why I thought that they had a shot. And and really, I get their two different styles of teams. The Rams like to throw it a lot. The um, Niners like to run it a lot. But their style of play makes you fight. And I mean, and, and we've seen that proven over the years with this team. Their style is gonna make you get in a dogfight, and you know that's kind of what we got on Sunday. The Niners, mm-hmm. for a moment there, they were doing their thing with the run game. Well, I don't want to say with the run game. They they I'm had a say, lead. They, 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 they had a lead. Say, that's not clear. They they had. I a don't lead. think they had. I, 
I don't think they had 80 yards rushing in that game. I don't know what the numbers are in terms of the rushing yards, but their yards per carry was not that great at all. Like, it was yeah, like... Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. They yeah. shut down the run game. Let's, let me, yeah, let me yeah, explain yeah. what I'm saying. The Rams yeah. shut down the run game. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Agree there. They, I mean, it might have been three yards a carry, but I think they rushed it like 20 times, and Garoppolo had to throw it like 30 times. So, and, and that's yeah. probably what they got shut him that hurt. down. That's probably what got they, him No, chill. they shut that shit down. They did. Yeah, they, they shut did. that. No. Well, well, I, but it's, but you got to give credit to the Rams. The Rams yeah. shut them down the run game and put. Hey Jimmy, you gonna have to win this you game. You have to win the game, and right? Honestly, right, and he almost did. He almost did. He almost did. But mm. you know, it, mm. he. I don't know about almost did. Well, with a ten point I, they lead, they were in a dog fight. With, with, with a ten point they lead, they were in a dog fight. Yeah, they were. They 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 were. It, it, it didn't it didn't go the way I thought it would. I thought the run game would dominate a little more than it did, but that that's part of why I thought they had a better shot over the Bengals beating the Chiefs, but. Obviously, getting back to that game for a second, um, Joe Burrow got sacked once. And he probably could have got sacked two, three more times, but Joe Burrow protected the offensive line from, you know, looking bad. So, to me, I thought that that was one of the big differences in them getting the win over the Chiefs. Yeah, um, I, I guess to put I guess to put my bow on the Rams and the Forty uh, Niners, man. Um, when it all comes down to it, when it all comes down to it, mm-hmm. it's it's star it's stars against stars. I'm always on when it's time to make a play. The stars make plays, mm-hmm. and Aaron Aaron Donald, o, Odell Beckham, Matthew Stafford, who was brought to the team for this reason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cooper Cup, who is uh, say what you want, he's a star. League MVP, bro. That's my league MVP right yeah, there. Yeah, um, and those and those are the dudes that we're talking about who made the plays. Um, it's uh, it's disheartening to see Debo Samuel's. You know, he put it, he left it all on the field. Yep. Um, um, but you know. You ain't got those. You ain't Trey got Lance. those caliber stars. Trey Lance, you ain't era, got them. Ca- you ain't got them caliber. You ain't got them caliber stars on on your side of the, on your team, bro. The Rams got stars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's funny. So. You, it's funny you say that because um, I just happened to be in a Twitter space the other day, and um, it was a group of us comparing the Rams and the 49ers and their stars and stuff, and I made the point that the Rams are the better team on paper. They got the more. Yeah. They got the more stars, right? So yeah. someone, someone said, someone said, "Well, wait a minute. They're, you think they're that much better on paper?" I said, "Yeah." And then he started racking off Debo Samuel, Nick Bosa, <coughs> um, George Kittle, uh, Trent Williams. I didn't want to. I don't want to forget Trent Williams because mm-hmm. he did. He did play a good game against Green Bay last mm-hmm. week. So, um, but still, and I'm like, okay. You can give me those names, but and I'm going to give you... And then, I, go ahead. And then, and, and not to cut you off, but mm-hmm. Debo Samuels is a grown man. I'll put him in that con- in that star conversation, even though his, you know, popularity ain't necessarily high yet. Right. But I'll put him in that conversation. Um, George Kittle, obviously, I'll put him yep. in that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Nick Bosa is a good pass rush. I think he's a quality player. I don't know if he's a star yet. Okay. Okay. But but his name is recognizable and he do, and he does make plays. Uh, okay. I I I don't want to stretch it. I don't want to No, sure, you know, sure. It, in, that doesn't mean you're a star though. That's that's not what I was trying to get at. Yeah. You can you can you yeah, can I, have you can have the name and you can be productive. It doesn't mean you're a star. So And that's the same. And I feel the same way about Slim and, and with the charge Joey Bosa. Mm-hmm. I feel the same way about him. Like these are great pass rushers, good defensive players. I don't know that they're stars yet. Sure, sure, I can understand that. But yeah, but homie in the in the Twitter space was clearly wrong about that. It's like, bro, if I, I I for every name you give me on the Niners, I'm gonna give you Odell Beckham. I'm gonna give you Matt Stafford, Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald, Leonard Floyd, Von Miller, like uh, Jalen Ramsey, like. Like, come on. Like, this is the, yeah. you, like, they talked about the Showtime Lakers in the 80s. This is the Showtime Rams, okay? Like, this, mm-hmm. you know, this is what they got all these players for. 
They don't have another first round draft pick till 2025, I think. This is right. what they they're, right. they're making right. moves like they're the Lakers. This moment. Yeah. They better they, they, they it, but like we said, Super it, it, it is definitely Super Bowl or bust for them. So mm-hmm. we here we are. Yep, yep. Here we are. Yep, absolutely, bro. Um you you got anything else, man? I do not, man. All right, bro. So that so I I feel much better at the end of the show. You know, after talking about all the stuff in the beginning with all that, and there'll be some more stuff, I'm sure, to come out of it. But, man, it felt good to talk about some football for a change, bro. Like, some actual mm. games. <laughs> and not the nonsense. Fuck the NFL owners. Yeah. Fuck yeah. all of them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. facts. Because <laughs> you don't give a fuck, cause you don't Big. give a fuck about Big my facts. people being represented in a game that we patronize. Fuck y'all. Big facts. And, and for the record... I hope, <coughs> I hope, Dre and Snoop and them do something or say or say something, do something. Yeah. That's the hope. That's yeah. the hope. It doesn't mean that, that it's gonna happen. Hope. It doesn't mean you know they'll do it. They won't. I just have a hope that they do something or say something. That's all you could, really That's all we could do. Means something, right? That's all we could do. Yep. Yep. Uh, shout out to Mocha Bella in the chat room, in the Facebook live what chat. Uh, appreciate everybody tuning in. You can catch this episode on all of our streaming platforms. And also, don't forget, we got the Facebook page. We got the YouTube channel. We're also on Instagram, at Barbershop Sports Talk Podcast. And we're also on Twitter, at Barbershop SPOR2. And if you got questions or comments, you want to email us, the email is barbershop sports talk one at gmail.com. So uh that's it. Next week, we're gonna be talking Super Bowl, bruh. Can't wait for that one. Yeah. No doubt, no doubt. Yep. Alright, fam. Y'all have a good week. We'll be back next week. Peace. Love. Recording stopped.